So thank you. Yeah, to close it off, just wanted to uh, make sure that it was clear that whole process is only uh, related to preparing the trays to be seeded. Uh, so once uh, you are scaling up, once you're starting uh, to grow your business more and more, you can see yourself doing this at least twice per week. Um, and also and ensuring that you do have enough trays also to do it beforehand. So also set aside a cleaning day. Ideally for me, this was in the middle of the week, Wednesdays, where I would clean and dry all my trays. Uh, then Mondays and Thursdays were my uh, seeding days or preparing the soil uh, for the sowing later on. So it's uh, one step before the other, not uh, uh, preparing the trays with soil and also seeding, right? So you finish completely because as you scale up, you'll have eventually 20, 40, 50, even 80 trays at one point and during, during only one tray preparation. Uh, so if that's the case, make sure you're completely setting aside only this, focused on only that task at hand, then you can move on uh, to sewing your trays. Again, this was 15 minutes for nine trays for two people. You can, of course, add, add, uh, multiply this by how many more trays you want to do and, uh, and fit it into a uh, different type of, uh, of your day, especially if you're working during the day. Perhaps you can fit it in later on or in, in the very start of your day before you get started early mornings. Uh, but it's something very straightforward. So it's about having the space. Ideally, you're you know, semi ground space or a little bit outside, especially if you're working with soil, you'll make a mess uh, and a little bit of uh, water. Of course, you'll you can easily clean that up. But <clears throat> at the beginning, it's it's a straightforward process. And this, if, if you're very well organized, will allow you to scale up in the near future. Uh, with that said, of course, uh, here in the Netherlands, I am uh, trying my best to ensure that there's more growers like us that the competition, especially from uh, the biggest lion here, uh, Copar Crest, does not continue to impede our progress. Uh, they are just a supplier uh, of microgreens, which they call cresses. Uh, they misinform the public. Of course, they talk about the importance of sustainability, but uh, their actions are about actually creating scarcity and a, and a complete disconnect uh, for a food supply because they're one of the largest exporters of this country. So. They do nothing in terms of integration of the food supply, in terms of actually uh, advising the city to ensure that there's planning of food within the city. Uh, ideally, you have this much presence for decades. I mean, they, there's so many loyalists all around here. It makes it also very challenging for you to pick up new customers uh, because of their uh, connections to Horeca, meaning the hospitality sector in the Netherlands. It makes it a uh, challenge left and right at fairs. A lot of people know the brand, know the name, and uh, makes it very difficult uh, to fully test uh, uh, what a, a more sustainable uh, f food uh, production system would look like, especially in, in the second most densest populated place on the planet. So ideally, we want to be able to get there, and we want to make sure that we can fully test it while we're here and while we have the technology, especially this country leads in uh, the horticulture technology, you see it every year. You, of course, I studied here because of that, but more and but more and more, it's little to no use within the country. It's exported. It's where it's the it's, it's uh, shipped to the highest bidders, used uh, to not grow food, but instead uh, to only uh, pre prevent. Uh, catastrophes you know it's only emergency situations that's where you know usually the highest bidder is but it's not used to feed a local population that's why our, my product still does not exist in the market it's still very difficult to connect those dots in uh, supermarkets especially at the high turnover locations so therefore we still need to build more bridges we still need to build more awareness of the product um, and of course uh, to be as transparent as, as we can about our processes and where we want to uh, go as far as uh, this food transition is concerned. So I, I hope uh, to be able to continue with these videos and to show as much content and behind the scenes and um, and keep growing microgreens, not just the equipment, of course, uh, through a more decentralized way of, of, of growing uh, food in Europe, in the Netherlands, uh, 
and wherever else it could work. That's all. And uh, thank you very much. Have a blessed day. Enjoy growing and uh, stay safe. Bye-bye. Okay.